My name is Sam Jenks, and welcome to another episode of The Way We Source, a podcast hosted by Kodiak Hub, where we share our talks with procurement practitioners, leaders, experts, consultants, content gurus, and people that we find downright inspiring, diving into the role that sourcing and procurement play in the way that we live. Today, we have the pleasure of hosting a C-suite leader who is taking procurement into a new and very exciting digital era as Chief Procurement Officer at BT Group, the founder and chairman of the board at BT Sourced, Cyril Hora. Cyril, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Sam. Did I do okay with pronouncing your last name on on that that take? you You did perfect. You were perfect. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm going to start with a bit of a softball question, but something we ask a lot of our guests. What exactly does procurement and sourcing mean to you? Well, uh, so Sam, Sam, thank you for hosting me for uh, to the to this podcast and, and sharing obviously my experience and our experience at BTS first about procurement and sourcing. Um, first of all, I would say passion. Um, because I'm Mm -hmm. extremely passionate about what I'm doing. And we have a team as well, which is extremely passionate. So passion is probably the first word which is coming to my mind. And if I want to summarize that in one word, it's the the word that I will pick. Um, We love what we do. We're passionate about what we do. And we source for good, or actually, so we source for a better future. That's what we do at BT Source. Fantastic to hear. And it's nice to hear that people are passionate about procurement as we are as well. BT Source has really taken a super exciting journey and we'll dive a lot into the journey that you guys have taken. Uh, The organization does have a slogan, as you just mentioned, we source for a better future, uh, which we all know is is a lot more than just a hashtag, right? Uh, But it's more way of life at BT Source. What exactly does this phrase mean to you and your team? You're right, Sam. It's way more than a hashtag. So we sourced for a better future. So we, it's basically us, the team, source it's what we do for a living. And for a better future, has two dimensions. The first one, it's on the ESG dimension. You know mm-hmm. that BT is extremely committed when it comes to ESG. Actually, so we had even our first carbon target in that back in 1992. So you see that it's not like it's because it's fashionable wow. or at least people are speaking about that right now. We have committed to carbon reduction since 1992. So we are extremely passionate about ESG. We are taking care, obviously, of all our employees, all of our customers, all the stakeholders as well. Extremely, extremely committed to that. So that's the first part of For the Better Future. And the second part of the For the Better Future is as well the technology because we I've invested deeply into technology, deeply into digital, and even in the future of uh, procurement, because we have a team of data scientists, which um, I tend to call them the Area 51, because they are looking <laughs> at the future of procurement. Right. Um, and, and that's as well sort of for the better futures, because we look at the way we will change procurement, the way we can really influence the way we all procure through the technology. And we have another commitment at BT as well. So we want a technology which is here for good. So it's technology which is not arm, you know, which is not an issue or people are, are extremely comf- comfortable with because that's one of the commitments that we have made as well. We want to be responsible when it comes to the usage of technology at BT. And that's as well. So the for the better future dimension, ESG in one end, technology, but technology with no arm to on the other end as well for uh, for the future of procurement. So mm-hmm. way more than uh, basically a hashtag, and that's the values that we by which we are living. It's fantastic to have those pillars as well to be able to guide the organization towards what it is that you're really working towards. And also, I love the idea of having you know a a, a, a value at the core, a brand at the core of procurement. Uh, because it's a, it's something that I think has allowed you guys to do things that many procurement organizations aren't able to do. And again, we'll talk a lot more about that. Uh, the BT sourced journey is unique and inspiring, if you ask me. And its inception uh, has this strong focus on sustainability and digital transformation, as you've just spoken about. Uh, BT sourced is BT owned, as we know, uh, but it's a it's a standalone entity, giving you guys the freedom to really challenge the traditional pro- procurement model as as I've read about, uh, uh, to really unlock extra value for BT, your partners, colleagues, and customers. What exactly inspired the start of this new venture that you guys have at BT Sourced? It's uh, it's relatively simple. So we wanted to, A, 
being a tool used by BT for its own transformations. I mean, that's mm. not just only the procurement. Procurement was the procurement transformation was as well a mean to a broader procurement within a broader, broader transformation. Sorry, uh, within the, within BT, and and that's the way we really looked at what we did. We said, okay, so we want to digitize the overall operation. We want to digitize BT as a whole. We want to better serve our customer with digit- through digitization. And when we look at that, so we said, okay, so that's a firm, I would say, a fantastic tool to really allow transformation within procurement, obviously, but within BT. And then, so the other ambition as well was to be an, an open platform. So we wanted to be an open platform. An open platform means pretty much everything. So meaning that partnering with suppliers, partnering with all our digital ecosystem on the procurement side, and why not partnering with someone else? Because after all, Maybe we will welcome, I don't know, or a shareholder, or a customer, or a partner, something that's, we are extremely open. So that's, uh, you have, from the very, in, from the inception of the, of BT Source, we want it to be extremely open. And that's what helped us, obviously, to build our BT Procurement Garage, to welcome the startup that worked with us, to build this digital ecosystem, and to really being strong in terms of innovation on the digitization side of, of procurement. Now, there's a lot of things that you guys are, are, are doing, in my opinion, to, to challenge the, the traditional uh, procurement model. But if you, would, if you would say or pick out one or two things, what is it exactly that you guys are most focused on reinventing with the traditional model of procurement? Well, because probably we don't like the old school procurement. Uh, <laughs> what is the old school procurement probably, to, to sit to pora? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Well, Some... the, the, the old school procurement was like, you know, very transactional, obviously, but as well, um, mm. not very open to innovation. That's, that's, no. that's really probably the, the, the main stuff. So I mean, that's uh, when I'm discussing with people um, in, in general, I, I can feel that uh, what, Procurement people tend to like its process and they like to follow the process mm. and they like to be extremely guided. And when it when they are going into like, I would say an open field, and when you've got like a extremely open minded, so it's it's a bit more complicated complicated for procurement people. And what we did with BT Shows, with our hashtag that we just discussed part, um, we try really to be open. And we've been able to attract talent uh, from 29 different countries. We've got 29 nationalities here in the wow. More than forty across all the team, uh, and we've been able to attract all those people because they really bought in um, our story. They really wanted to leave the transformation of procurements and the digitization of procurement from within, and that's one of the reasons why they joined us. Uh, so because they wanted really to challenge the status quo, they really wanted to learn new things. They really wanted to have as well a, a new way of looking at at procurement. So that's uh, I would say old school for me. It's uh, <laughs> It's a bit like a, the traditional perception of procurement, very conservative. And mm. new school, it's a bit like what I've said before, which is um, we've got an Area 51 team. So looking at what procurement may look like in the next five years, next 10 years even, um, we're investing into that as well because we've got, it's our research and development, if you like. And I don't know, I'm not sure that there are a lot of procurement organizations that have their own research and, de- research and development department. Yeah. But again, I think that is something that's so inspiring is your guys have led with your why, right? Um, and and built the brand in a way that I think has allowed you, again, to, to separate yourself and do really exciting things that more traditional teams can't in the procurement function. I'm, I'm curious, how has the separation uh, allowed you guys to enhance and impact and deliver as a function of procurement to the BT group? Has, has it aided you guys in your overall delivery as a vessel? Well, it's it's interesting because if you're fully embedded into the team, people don't pay really attention to you. Um, mm, the moment right. you you get separated, so they, they start to understand, oh, what is going on there, and then they are <laughs> even more interested to procurement than they were before. Uh, first of all, and two, because we really invested quite a lot and massively into the digital tool. We had, obviously, because we were separated, so we had a a huge need in terms of transparency to our stakeholders and way of engaging with our stakeholders and pretty much everything which is around the stakeholders. Um, And all our digital ecosystem was really very much tuned to that. Um, It's the separation helped us really to put that in front of our stakeholders, making them understanding that. Yeah, procurement, it's it's really something which you have to partner with. And it's uh, it's very interesting. There's a lot of innovation out there. Um, and, and then, so 
our digital tools were a way really to share all of that with our stakeholders, give them this great visibility because, again, so we are not, not sitting in the same building, we're not even in the same company to a certain extent, even though we're wholly owned by, by BT. Right. And that's, that's something which really being separated helped us to, uh, to do. Understood. I mean, I'm sure that you've had many things uh, that you could tell that are inspiring uh, a- along the journey of, of creating and, and, and continuing to build on BT Source as an organization. Do you have any concrete tips if you could provide two or three for any procurement leader that is out there who's also looking to challenge the status quo uh, and also the traditional procurement model? What, what could they do? Uh, size, size the right moment. I had a lot of discussion with CPOs and, um, you know, they were, they want to learn about what we have done, how I've been able to do it, how I've been able to convince my stakeholder, I've been able to convince as well the executive committee of the company to do it. And I said, well, size the right moment. Um, then I was discussing with one CPO recently and, uh, as we were discussing, he said, oh, yeah, you know, the company is about to merge uh, with another one. And mm. most likely I would be the CPO of this new entity. I was extremely happy for him. And I said, well, you've got your moment. Just size it. Just go and take this moment uh, just to change completely the way you're operating. Uh, go full-fledged on digitization. Uh, just size this right moment. Because I've seen too many people, or actually so too many people asking me the same question. <laughs> How have you been able to do that? Well, I right. said, I joined BT. It's three weeks after I created a BT program in the garage. I mm. sized the right moment. So just like a, pick it from either it's from the beginning mm. or because you've got a merger like the example that I was mentioning or because there's something else which is happening. And use it, leverage it, really to uh, completely change the way you were operating, completely change the tools that you were using. And, um, and, and you will see, you will create a huge momentum based on that, but size the right moments and don't be afraid of it, obviously. And yeah, fantastic there's a lot of people tip. as well, which are, seems to be afraid when, oh yeah, but you did it when you join, I'm three years, four years in the job, I cannot do right. it anymore. Well, there's always one of these moments where you can jump on it and really turn your organization upside down, maybe a bit. <laughs> and then after that, move on and, and really change the way you operate. Yeah, be bold, seize the moment. I I love that yeah, opportunity, bold, yeah. opportunistic uh, type of uh, approach, and and also not not being afraid to take a chance, uh, which I yeah. think is maybe against the nature of the risk averse procurement professional, right? Always trying to size things up and 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 minimize risk as much as possible, rather than than taking taking that chance. So great tips. If you could go back and uh, to the to the to the inception of BT Source and give yourself one tip. What would that be? It's a it's a, <clears throat> it's a good question because, well, interestingly enough, when we started, it was just before COVID started, so mm. 2019, and despite well COVID, we we, we did it, and and yeah, <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure that I've got a tip because otherwise I might, I might have thought too much and I've not done what <laughs> I've done. So if, right. if my, my tip would be don't think. Just do it. <laughs> to, yeah, and, and uh, hope that COVID when, doesn't, maybe hope that COVID doesn't happen again. <laughs> well, if, if you think about that, it's uh, it's what uh, I've told my team all along. Um, we um, I started to work on a project back in 2019 when I joined, uh, getting approval in 2020 in the midst of COVID and started the operation April 21. Uh, and we did it in eight months. And finally, COVID did not stop us. Um so it's uh, it's it was extremely complicated, but very mm. exciting at the same time. So, yeah, and I've I've heard this from various leaders that some believe that COVID had had accelerated certain aspects of the business and efficiency. Did you experience that during during that well, time? Yeah, most most likely. I mean, that's uh, if you think about that, BT is a big big company, a large company. Right. Well, there's larger company than BT, obviously, but we are relatively large. Um, and we've been able to do such project in eight months. And I had discussion with some some people from the uh, the exco, and they said, "Oh, yeah, we were not expecting you to be so fast." So I would right. say, yeah, it was it was a good opportunity. It's maybe because this period was unknown for all of us um, that we've been mm. able to get to be at, to 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 do that at uh, at a speed that none of us actually even none of us were expecting us to be able to. 
and none of our stakeholders as well were expected us to be. So absolutely, probably an accelerator more than anything else. Yeah, exciting. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit here. You've talked now about digital, um, and I know that you're uh, uh, not only a, a massive fan, but also a a, um, a real spokesperson for digital with in procurement and leading into the new era of procurement and how digital solutions, especially with a certain level of interconnectivity, uh, can be able to to really uh, leverage the the function and the role to to, to excellence, right? Uh, the journey of digital transformation in in the procurement function at BT itself has really intensified, and it and it started a few years ago, as you mentioned, right, with the digital procurement garage. Um, would you mind just providing our listeners with a little bit of a, a understanding of what kind of results you feel this has delivered to the business? Well, interestingly enough, I've got some of, I would say, the so-called procurement digital tool which are mainly used by, uh, so when I'm looking at the top users, it's the business first, finance two, mm. and procurement third. Um, and that's that was a very, very interesting piece for me because at the beginning, obviously, when we made choices that we have made, they were all based on our own needs. And I never realized, right. to be honest, uh, to be very frank, that actually, so the main user won't be procurement, but would be my stakeholder. Um, you know, I had a kind of some motto, I want everything mobile because I want everything to be accessible on a mobile phone and I want everything available in two clicks and I want the user interface to be as I would say consumer, consumer grade. So I mean that there's no reason for us spending our time on various applications all the day. And when we're going to the business, you've got this old interface, uh, old user interface that you have to deal with. Right. Based on that, uh, because when we when we picked the tool that we that we have picked uh, with that in mind, it was very easy for the business to get into that. I Meaning that it's there's no training which is required. You don't need to be a procurement professional. You can understand the data. You can understand the the, the tool that, it, that is in front of you. You can use it with very little to none actually. So no training. And and myself, I'm, I'm not. Tra- on purpose, I'm not taking any training on the tools because if mm. I'm capable of navigating within the tool without training, it means that my stakeholder would be able to do that. So that's that was really something that went way beyond what I was expecting. And I said, as I said, I've got several tools where the business is using that and and finance, for example, for that matters as well, are using those tools way more than we procurements do. Um, so that's that's that's. Very, very interesting because ultimately what I would like to do, because if you look at the system and a process that Procurement had built for years and years and years, any users or any stakeholder needs to go to the tool, needs to go to our tool to buy something. And what I would like, which is my ultimate goal to a certain extent, is that the tool is coming to them mm. and I don't have to make any efforts. Uh, that's... Um, that's the future that I can see of procurement. So where basically you are capable of building something. Um, I've got some ideas in mind, as you can imagine. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> building something that will enable the user uh, really to engage, I would say, or not really procurement, to have the the, the whole uh, procurement journeys to be seamless and, yeah. and really as easy as when you're going to Amazon or, or stuff like that. But it's 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 really it's really what 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 matters to me, and I've seen that when you're giving them tools which are extremely user friendly, easy to use, they are using they, them way more than you were expecting. Hmm. And and I think that this is also an interesting dichotomy because it, and it goes hand in hand with this idea of traditional procurement, right? As a global organization of the scale of BT, you guys should be focused on you know mapping massive processes first and user friendliness and user experience second. You guys kind of went the other way around, yep. picking user friendly tools that then can be able to meet your processes or maybe shifting processes to be able to 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 adopt these solutions. Do you think that that is something that has helped you and the business to be able to further your digital journey? Is that flexibility? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. When you've got uh stakeholders uh, in meeting with the CEO, naming the tools that you gave them access to and telling the CEO that, well, it's super easy to find what they are looking for. Mm. uh, You know that it's a big win. 
Uh, You've done your job right. Yeah, absolutely. And and as well, it's changed back to one of your questions. So it changed completely the perception of documents. Um, Mm. Because in that case, so you're you're way more, I would say, perceived as, yeah, I know that many people use business partner, but way more perceived as business partners, or at least you you are not just those people which are preventing the business to spend money. You're yes, you do that <laughs> because it's still part of, of the job, but yeah. at the same time as well. So you understand our business and you're, you're bringing them solutions that they like. Um, and for example, one of the tools that we're using, we've been able to uh, give insights, customer insight based on our procurement data. Mm. And, and then so by vertical, mm. uh, by kind of industry and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and then, so we, we can, based on our document that I give to our salespeople, so a trend, a profile of their customer, profile of their customer and the profile of all their customer in a given vertical. And that was extremely valuable as well for the, for the business. And when they understood that, plus they've seen that the tool was very easy to use, obviously they want to learn even more and they want to partner even more with you. And then certainly, right. but partnering on a business standpoint, uh, the same on the risk management, when you've got a digital platform and you say, right. well, if you want to give access to your customer and they can see the way we, or can even connect their own, in, even connect their risk platform with our risk platform, um, there, there's a value proposition there for us to go to in front of our customer and say, hey, you know, if you're afraid, if you want, if you're concerned about the way we're managing our risk, we can open our platform to you, we can connect mm. your platform to our platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's 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 very interesting to see how the business understood that suddenly the tools, the digital ecosystem that we have built, are giving them insight to their customer on their customer, and as yeah. well an interesting value proposition as well to their customer, showing and demonstrating that we are transparent, we have nothing to hide, and mm-hmm. actually so we can partner us on many aspects. But I think that that is also the point that's the most inspiring and and, and interesting here is right is is that you guys have built the digital ecosystem not just to have it for yourself but to also share it with your ecosystem, which Absolutely. again is back to this idea of reinventing the era the the new era of procurement and tra- challenging the status quo of the traditional style of buyer and seller, seller and buyer, yeah. right? Two parties in, instead partnering and and creating a, a new type of uh, of relationship, which I, which I love and I think is is really inspiring. Uh, and probably very inspiring to our listeners. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, and, and just to try and try and round things off here as we're coming to the towards the end of our session, you know. Uh, uh, but I, I, I have to talk about this this uh, connection between digital and 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 and, and sustainability, uh, as as I know that it's two of your your main pillars in the business. Um, how, how is it that you think that these two focuses fit together? And then as a second part of that question, how have the digital solutions that you've brought in driven forward the sustainability initiative at BT Group? Well, on the, on the first part of the question, uh, one of the main changes, because all the company have taken like a huge commitment in terms of carbon footprint reduction, or, or, or I would say all the dimension of ESG to make it simple. Right. One of the challenges that we have on the procurement side, especially when company like us, most of our, for example, carbon emission, but I would say not just only the carbon, but a lot of stuff are are basically uh, coming from our third party uh, yeah. partners. Sure. One of the main challenges that we have is really to walk the talk and making sure that our overall ecosystem is basically living and breathing the commitment that we have taken and mm. that we're fully aligned. Mm. Given the number of suppliers that we have to deal, given the number of transactions that we have every year with our supply base, right? We need absolutely to um, be able to track our commitments in a very accurate manner, and at an affordable cost as well. And that's where digital will play, and is starting already to play a key role into that. Or you can make sure that your ecosystem is fully aligned and living and raising your commitments, and obviously how you can do it at a cost that you can afford. And that's where, obviously, every startup that we can see and that we're discussing with in this world, each of them are at this stage bringing a piece of it. Right. Uh, But very soon, I'm sure that you will find solutions that will be able to stitch all of that together and really uh, enabling us to to go after, I would say, to to really leverage all the digital capabilities to uh, better track all our commitments in our supply base. So that's that's extremely key, and that's we believe that's that's the way to to go. That's the only way almost to go, 
uh, because obviously I cannot have um, any of my team member to sit in every factories of our vendors and then on the tier two and the tier three and tier four. So that's that's a that's a huge bet that we're making. We um, we've got interestingly enough we've got a our risk management platform. I had many discussions with our risk management partner because mm. there's um, given the fact that you have all our suppliers pinned on a map. There's obviously not just only on a risk but as well on the ESG dimension. Um, we can easily use this platform to track the risk in one hand, but as well to track the implementation of our ESG. Uh, commitments. Exciting. I, I think that uh, the the journey that you guys have taken is is one that inspires, and I hope that uh, everybody is being able to take something from from this this episode today as a, as a little bit of a nugget of inspiration of how maybe they could be able to create change, whether it's from a digital aspect or organizationally as well, or the role of procurement as a whole. Um, I, I'm curious, and and you know, we we ask a lot of our guests this that are in in senior leadership positions as yourself. If you could go back to the beginning of your career and give give uh, you know Sido Pura, who's just starting out, uh, you know, a, 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 a tip, uh, one tip and 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 piece of advice, what would you what would you you tell a uh, young Sido? So, sorry to say, young Sido, you're still young Sido, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm not anymore. So Sam, so you be you can be comfortable with that. Okay. Um, It's 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 a good question, um, and especially in the world. When when I started, actually moving abroad was um, was not as huge stuff like mm. like it is right now. And I should have well add um, that was my plan. I was supposed to be um, at the very beginning go to China. Okay, met my wife, decided to stay where I was. Um, it's uh, if if um yeah if I had a piece of advice for. Or, for the young me was, yeah, you should have moved way earlier than what you have done. <laughs> okay, uh, understood. That's, 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 that's a big stuff because you, you are yeah. learning so much by confronting yourself with other cultures. So I lived in the Middle East, lived in the US, now in, well, in Ireland, in the UK, in Germany. Um, you're, you're learning so much from uh, confronting yourself to other cultures, living in other countries. Yeah. Um, seeing as well other perspective. Um, so that's that's what basically I believe that I should have done way, way more uh, earlier than what I've done. Yeah, and we're 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 having a, another guest on the, the show, David Lowesby, and he he himself had traveled quite a bit uh, and and been been internationally, and he said something that I think was very interesting. That is, is that that puts you in a position to have to make sense of new situations and translate those situations and adapt and 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 be you know a, a, a person that can be adaptable. Um, which I think is uh, which is maybe a great tip to to a lot of people that uh, want to be able to challenge themselves in that way in their career. Thank you so much for the time that you spent today on the on the episode. Uh, some fantastic insights about the journey that you guys have taken at BT Source. We have just one last little uh, uh, part of the episode that we do with all of our guests: a little quick fire round, as we call it, our Kodiak moment. As you remember, <laughs> Kodak, the uh, camera brand, yep, they used yep. to have the Kodak yeah, I'm, I'm moment. Old enough, Sam. I'm right. old enough to remember that. <laughs> Same here. Well, the Kodak moment, uh, it, it was, of course, a special moment shared uh, in, in frozen in time. So now we're going to share our special little moment. Really, it's just going to be a quick fire of, of, of questions. One word or, or one sentence answers uh, so people can get to know Cyril Pura, uh, not just the CPO and, and the, 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 uh, the founder and, and chairman of the board of, of BT Source, but also uh, uh, you know, the person <laughs> as well. So Cyril, um, if I were to come over to your house, uh, as you say in Swedish, a pradret, the dish that you would most be able to impress other guests with, what would you be making? Well, uh, it's a uh, it's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, all right. Not a, not a big cook, or no, not at all, not okay. at all. I'm, I'm doing <laughs> okay. the final assembly, so I'm I'm living by myself for a while. So I'm just doing the final assembly. All right, understood. If you have a, one opportunity to travel, uh, all expenses paid, vacation, where are you heading? Uh, back to Japan. Very okay. interesting country. Fantastic. One thing that you, you liked about Japan the most? It's so different. Mm. It's so different. That's what you know. Um, even though Middle East was as well. 
Very cool. One book that you would be able to to uh, uh, suggest, or podcast, or series, just something that uh, that you you think our listeners w- could be able to get either inspired from, or <laughs> have a good time listening to, or watching, or reading. But your podcast sound obvious. <laughs> well, you're too kind, Cyril. Fantastic. Thank you so much for for being on today's episode. And may I ask as well if people want to get in contact with you or reach out or learn more about what you guys are doing at BT Source, how would they best do so? LinkedIn. Fantastic. Just reach Thank me you out so- on LinkedIn. Fantastic, and we'll be make sure to we'll make sure to, to share uh, then uh, Cyril's uh, uh, details in the uh, meeting notes or in the podcast episode notes as well. Thank you so much for taking the time, Cyril, and uh, we uh, look forward to hearing again from everybody next week. Thank you, Sam, for having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like the content, make sure to give us five stars and follow the podcast.